Hi, I'm Louis Presente Arjuna. So for the day, I will tell you a story that was written by me, which is Let's Love and Move On. One night, there was a happy family who is having a picnic beside the lake. The mother, which is me, loves to tell stories. On that day, the mother tells a story about the moon and how the moon faces and the goddess of moon, which is Shama and her pet rabbit. Shama was a normal person living in China with her husband, Hui, which is an archer. The archer was given an elixir that has immortality. That elixir was for him and Shama so they can love eternally. One night, there was a guy who was so jealous of them. He tried to steal the elixir of immortality to Hui. Shanga already knew about that, so he immediately drank that elixir. But suddenly, she floated to the moon with herself only, not with Hui. So she was so lonely in the moon. The mother even tells that Shanga is still finding a way to break the spell so she can go back to Hui. The daughter, which is Lina, was astonished by that story. She believed that there is true love, the love that never dies, and love that cannot be replaced by anything. Many months passed by, the mother, which is Lin, was feeling sick, weak, and unconscious. One day, she passed away. Lina was very gloomy that day. After many years passed by, Liji, her father, questioned Lina. If she's feeling lonely, she answered, No, never, because I have you and my friends. Well, how about you? One month passed by, when the daughter was going home, she saw a woman inside their home. Excuse me, ma'am, who are you and what are you doing inside our house? She questioned. Then the woman replied, Isn't it this is the house of Liji? Lina was shocked when she heard the name of her father. She asked, What is your relationship with my father? Well, hi, good morning. I am she, the girlfriend of Liji, said the woman. Lina's mind was full of emotion, anger, sadness, and sorrow. Then Liji appeared. He introduced Shin to Lina. Lina faced with her father. Looking at him, very disappointed. Then she ran upstairs to her room. Then after that, they ate their dinner. When they are eating, they look up the sky and the, they saw the moon shining brightly. Lina remembered the story of her mother when she was little. She also remembered the goddess of moon, Shama, that she is still trying to find the potion, that she is still finding a way to go back. After they have dinner, she immediately goes back to her room and made a plan going to the moon. Lina is known to be the stop of her school. She always gets first place in any competitions. She even graduated as valedictorian of her school. Her plan is to make her rocket that can bring her to the moon. So that night, she assembles buy all the materials needed in making the rocket. She even lied to her dad that all the things she bought online were intended for her work. So after she bought all the materials, she immediately starts building her rocket. Her first try was a big fail, but after all the experimentations and calculations, on her second try, she managed to build the proper rocket. So that night, she prepared herself to see Shanghai. At the start, her takeoff was doing well, but many months away, when she was about towards space, her rocket was unstable and was destroyed. When she was falling, a light struck down to her and she floated. The light was coming through the moon. She was already near the moon. There was a guard, a dog guardian. The dog assisted Lina to the palace. When she entered that palace, it was very dark. The room was very dark. Then some glowing creatures appeared and the lights turned on. Then a woman showed up and she performed very lightly. After her performance, she introduced herself. They call me the goddess of moon and I am Shama, she said. Lina dropped her jaw when she heard the name Shama. She was astonished by the beauty of Shama 
She slowly approached the Shanga and gave Shanga a hug. After that, Lena questioned Shanga, How is it going? Then Shanga replied, The what? While petting her pet rabbit, the potion, the potion that will break the spell of her immortality, so you can go back to Hui again. Lena questioned her again. Then Shanga replied, Well, you see, I have moved on. There will be no other way but that I will break the curse. Lena said, What? But you love him very much. So Shanga put down her pet rabbit and also said, Sometimes you have to move on to the person you really love. At first, it was a challenge for me to move on and do other things besides going back to Hui. I left Hui alone and I lived to the moon alone. It was a really challenge for me to forget him. But the time I was suffering, I met these globe creatures. They helped me to have fun and also they are the reason why I moved on. To me, it was not a re it was not really hard to move on because I only think that that person will never come back again and you will never see again. To me, it requires a new person to help you move on. A person that will be always be with you, helps you with your sorrows, and that person that will make you smile always. Besides, it happened in the past and a thousand years ago. He probably did for now. So Lani heard that and she cried. Why are you crying? Shanga said, I thought you really love Hui and you should do anything in order to be with him forever. Lina said this while sobbing. Hui is loving I will be forever. In every love, you must move on. If you know that the person will never come again, then find a new piece that will repair the broken part of her heart. It is not easy to move on, so you can take your time. Shanga said, so, after that, Shanga gave Lina a hug. So Lina immediately stopped crying and also hugs Shanga. I will take you a third to my palace so you can feel better now. Shanga said to Lina. Then Lina replied, thank you, I will appreciate that. Then she smiled. Then Lina's sadness wiped out and a joyful smile was replaced. After their tour, Lina hugged Shanga and said goodbye. Then Shanga bring two dragon-headed lions with wings. When she saw her father and she, she gave them a hug and returned home. From now on, Liji and she got married and they were blessed with a baby boy. On the other hand, Lina was very cheerful and she treated Chin as her mother and she always assisted Chin when she will pee, go up and down the stairs because Chin was pregnant and they lived happily. The story is entitled The Curse Upon Golden City. In the land of Denshara, there was a huge and beautiful kingdom named Kingdom of Ar, or Golden City. The ruler of the kingdom was King John and Queen Elizabeth. King John was a brave and a great king. He has a good heart for all of his people. He came from a rich and powerful family, but he is selfless, self-earth guy, and doesn't use his power for himself. He is a good friend of King Matthew, the ruler of the Kingdom of Oz. Queen Elizabeth was the most beautiful woman in the land of Denshara. Many people refer to her as an angel because of her angelic beauty. She came from a poor family and she was working in a small town when she met the love of her life. King John was a prince at that time. They got married and became the leader of the Kingdom of Oz. Despite her angelic beauty, she is self-centered and strict. She doesn't like losing and settling for less. One day, they proclaimed to the people of Golden City that a queen already gave birth to their son named Prince Peter and will be the next leader of the kingdom. The people of Golden City were full of joy when they found out the big news. Gave some gift, held a festivity to celebrate the newly born child of King John and Queen Elizabeth. The prince grew up with a lot of affection and love from his parents and the people of Golden City. He is handsome, brave, and humble like the king. 
He's jolly and he has a good sense of humor. That's why the people are, ha are happy having him around. He likes to learn how to fight and be a role model so that one day he can defend the kingdom from enemies and be a great leader like his father. After a period of time, he became the man he was dreaming about when he was still a child. Prince Peter were practicing sword fighting with his friends when the guards told him that King John wanted to have a word with him. Prince Peter went to the castle. He saw King John and Queen Elizabeth sitting at the throne having a conversation. Prince Peter kneeled down and said, Father, the guards told me you want to have a word with me. The king replied, Yes, son. Your mother and I are getting older and weaker. We don't think we still have the strength to rule this kingdom. The queen also replied, This kingdom needs a new leader that is strong and has enough knowledge in ruling so that the kingdom will not fall apart and be far off from harm. Prince Peter replied, I should take care of this kingdom, father. I spent my whole life practicing, fighting, hunting, and other things that will help me to become a great leader just like you. The queen replied, That is not enough, son. Being a leader of this kingdom is not an easy job, and it is a big responsibility. I just don't think you are ready for that. The prince replied, I'm too young, but I'm certain that I can rule this kingdom. I won't let all of your hard work in building and improving this kingdom go to waste. The king smiled and told the prince, I know, son, you have the potential in ruling this kingdom since you were a child. You are so determined and you worked hard to become who you are now. The queen interrupted, But you still have to prove to us that you are really capable in ruling this kingdom. The prince asked, What will I do? The king replied, You will be leading the war against the Asgardians. The guards told me that they were stealing our resources. We lost many men because of them, and they started to conquer and destroy one of our territories in Utopia. The prince replied, I will take care of that father. I won't let you down. I will prove to you that I am capable in ruling and protecting this kingdom. The prince immediately went to Utopia with his men and saw hundreds of Asgardians. They fought and eventually Prince Peter and his men won the war. Prince Peter stayed at the Utopia for a while to restore all the resources and buildings that they were destroyed by the Asgardians. The next morning, he decided to go back to Aram City to tell the king about the good news. Along his way, he decided to take a different route so that he gets home early before it gets dark. He went to the forest of Astra and then his compass began to not function properly. He got lost and decided to take some rest. Prince Peter fell asleep and then a girl in a white dress with a long curly golden hair woke him up. Prince Peter was shocked and the girl laughed. The girl said, Hi, what are you doing here? The prince replied, I got lost on my way home. I decided to take an alternate route and my compass broke. Can you help me? The girl smiled and replied, Sure, no problem. Prince Peter smiled and asked the girl, By the way, I haven't introduced myself. My name is Peter. The girl answered, My name is Anna. I live in a small town. You seem like a part of a wealthy family. Are you a prince? The prince replied, Yes, I live in the kingdom of Aram. King John and Queen Elizabeth are my parents. The girl was shocked and got excited when she found out that the prince was from the kingdom of Aram. She told the prince, Really? It is my dream to visit the kingdom of Aram. I heard a lot of good things about it. Your father is a really good leader and has a good heart for everyone. The prince stared at the blue eyes of Anna and smiled. He felt something strange. He felt his heart racing. The prince told her that she was the most beautiful woman he had ever seen in his whole life. Anna was flattered and, to and told the prince that he should head home because it is getting dark already. Then Peter replied, Would I see you again? I want to know you better, Anna. Anna chuckles and answered Peter. Of course, our house is near the forest of Astra, and I always go here when I want to feel happy and safe. This forest helped me a lot when I feel sad and lonely. 
You can come back here anytime you want. I'll be here. Prince Peter replied, I'll come back here soon, promise. And then smiled. Anne replied, I should also head home now. My parents will be worried. Goodbye, Peter. They both waved goodbye to each other and headed home. Peter arrived at the Golden City and excitedly told the king that they won against a guardian, as guardians. King John replied, You did well, my son. You proved to me and to your mother that you are worthy to become the next leader of this kingdom. Let's celebrate our victory against the Asgardians. King John planned a big celebration of the kingdom. The, decor the decoration looked amazing. All the people of the Golden City and people of Emerald City are, are invited. Everyone is having a good time. They are all dancing, laughing, talking, and drinking. King Matthew and her daughter, Princess Amber, are also there at the party. King John and Queen Elizabeth approach and welcome the two and introduce their son. King John said to King Matthew, Welcome to the Kingdom of Aurum, my friend. We are, celebra we are celebrating our victory against the Guardians. This is my son, Peter. He led the war and he proved to me that he is capable to be the next leader of the Golden City. King Matthew replied, At last, the Asgardians had a taste of their own medicine. Those monsters are scaring and destroying the people's home. I'm glad that you got rid of them, Peter. I'm sure you will be a great leader like your father. Prince Peter smiled and replied, I will do anything just to protect our people from harm. I love this kingdom and all of the people here tonight more than my life. King Matthew replied, I almost forgot. Let me introduce to you my wonderful daughter. This is Princess Amber. Princess Amber smiled at the prince and told him, I am Princess Amber of Emerald City. I heard a lot about you. You look so handsome. I was dying to meet you and I hope we can have a good relationship just like your father and my father. The prince replied, It was nice meeting you too, Princess Amber. Queen Elizabeth interrupted, and said, Well, we should stop talking and have some fun. King John agreed and told Prince Peter to hang out with Princess Amber so that they can know each other better. Princess Amber was happy while talking to the prince because since she was a child, she has a big crush on Peter but the prince seems to be distracted. He kept thinking about Anna. Princess Amber noticed that Peter was not listening to her so she decided to ask Peter to dance with her. The prince agreed to dance with her. They got the attention of all of the people that, na that night when they started dancing because they looked like they were meant to be together. Suddenly, Peter felt uncomfortable because he can't seem to stop thinking about Anna. He remembers the beautiful blue eyes and the charming face of Anna that, that the prince can't resist looking at too. He didn't feel anything like that before until she met Anna. The next morning, while they were eating breakfast at the royal dining table, the queen had something in mind after she saw the two dancing together last night. Queen Elizabeth asked the prince, How was your night, son? Did it go well? Peter answered, Yes, mother, I had so much fun. The queen replied, I just have some thoughts about you and Amber. The prince looked uncomfortable and asked, What is it, mother? The queen answered, I saw you dancing with her. You two will make a great couple. Peter didn't answer. The king asked, What do you think? Do you like her? The prince answered, I don't know, father. The queen asked angrily, Why? She is good looking. It will be a shame if we didn't marry her. He is the daughter of a good friend of ours. It will be wonderful because the Golden City and Emerald City will be united because of the two of you. King John replied, I think it will be also wonderful but it's up to our son. His happiness is what really matters for me. The Queen said, I don't want anybody else for our son. I won't allow my son to marry a girl that is not good for him. Prince Peter felt sad, stood up and said, I must go now. I have something important to do. Prince Peter went to the forest of Astral. His sadness was instantly gone when he saw Anna. He was so happy to see her. He hugged Anna and told her that she missed her so much and he wouldn't think 
that he would see her again. Anna smiled and told Peter that he's acting sobered and just a few days had passed when they last saw each other. Peter told her, I can stop thinking about you, Anna. A few months had passed. Peter always visits Anna at the forest of Astral. They became close, they confessed that they like each other, and eventually they become lovers. Every time that they see each other, their love deepens. One day, Peter noticed that Anna looked like something was bothering her. Peter asked, What is wrong, my love? Is something bothering you? Anna answered, I just think that I'm not good enough for you. Peter looked confused and asked her why she felt why she feel that way. Anna told him that Peter lives in a big castle. He comes from a rich and powerful family, while Anna lives in a small house. His modern father works hard and gets a small amount of money from it. Anna thinks that Peter deserves better. She told him that she should marry a princess, not a girl that is poor and simple. The prince held her hand and told her that she is the one that Peter wants to marry. He doesn't mind if Anna is not like other princesses he met, who is humble, works hard to help her family, and someone who is simple and makes me happy and feel loved. That's all that matters, Peter said. Anna hugged him. Peter also told Anna, I want you to meet my parents. I want to introduce to them the love of my life. Anna felt scared and said, Are you sure? I don't think that your parents will like me. Peter smiled and answered, Don't worry, my love. They will not just like you. They will love you and accept you. The grand royal dinner has come, and the prince is excited to introduce Anna to his parents. The queen seems really upset when she saw Anna. The king approached Anna and told her, It's nice meeting you, Anna. My son told me that you were a wonderful person. Welcome to the kingdom of Arum. Anna bowed and answered, It's a pleasure to finally meet you, King John and Queen Elizabeth. Queen Elizabeth didn't say one thing and turned her back on her. King John replied, Let's have a seat and eat. They sat and started eating. The queen is looking at Anna from head to toe. She asked her, Where do you live? Anna replied, In a small town near Forest of Astral, Your Highness. The queen asked again, Is your parents a king and a queen too? Anna answered, No, my mother is a tailor and my father is a carpenter. The queen said angrily, What? Are you serious? This is nonsense, Peter. Peter said, Calm down, mother. You don't even know her yet. She has a good heart and she loves me. The queen said, You shouldn't be settling for less. She came from a poor family and then what? You want to marry her? Should be ash you should be ashamed of yourself. King John stood up and said, Stop it. We should be happy for her, Peter. You shouldn't be judging Anna and try to look what Peter found in her. The queen answered, Are you allowing our son to marry a poor girl? He should be marrying Princess Amber. She is worthy to be the wife of our son. Anna cried and tried to leave, but Peter stopped her. Anna told Peter that his mother is right and left. Peter was disappointed and left too. He was so upset and he didn't know where to go. In his mind, he just wants to be far away from his mother. He suddenly realized that he was at the forest of tomb. The forest is known for the home of the witches and other evil creatures. Many people who dare to walk into the into this forest on their own will bump into a strange creature and will put a curse upon them that will make you suffer, die or sleep until the end of time. He was startled when he bumped into an old lady near a huge strange tree. The old lady recognized Peter as the prince of the kingdom of Arun. The old lady said, I'm Ophelia. What are you doing here at the forest of doom? Peter introduced himself and told the lady, and told the old lady what happened between her mom and him. The old lady smirked and told the prince should be here and he must go home now. Peter agreed, but he noticed that the old lady disappeared. He felt pain and fell and fell down screaming, asking for help, but no one heard him. The next day, the king and queen asked the guards to look for their son. 
they were worried that something might happen to Peter. After a few weeks, they finally found the prince near a huge strange tree at the forest of doom. They immediately took the prince back to the kingdom. When they arrived at the castle, all the people of the golden city were sad when they found out that the prince was sick. The doctor said that he can cure the prince because the prince has a curse upon him. They also found a scar at the back of the prince. The queen, wa the queen was shocked because the scar is familiar to her. She immediately told the king that she thinks she knows what happened to their son. The queen said she has a sister named Ophelia. She has also a scar at her back, like Peter. When they were kids, Ophelia was jealous of her because she was the favorite. Their parents always treat her like a princess. Elizabeth always gets the attention and love from everyone in their town. Elizabeth loves Ophelia more than anything else, but Ophelia is too mad at her. One night, Elizabeth woke up and saw Ophelia performing witchcraft. She told her parents about this and they scolded Ophelia. Ophelia shouted, told them how she felt and she doesn't want to be, their, to be part of their family anymore. She ran into the woods and never came back again. The queen thinks Ophelia wanted revenge, so she cursed Peter. Anna heard the news and she was worried for Peter. She visited Peter and took care of him. She never left his side. When the queen saw Anna, she felt guilty for insulting her at the grand royal dinner. She apologized. Anna accepted her apology and told the queen that she loves Peter more than anything. The next day, the queen went to the forest of doom to look for Ophelia. The queen begged and cried so that Ophelia would show up. After a few minutes, Ophelia showed up. The queen apologizes and told Ophelia how much she loves her. The queen said, I was worried about you when you left and never came back. I looked for you everywhere. Ophelia replied, Liar! You didn't shed a tear when I left. I got nothing. They didn't appreciate me. You're the favorite. The queen told Ophelia what happened to their parents when she left. She told them that they felt sorry for not appreciating Ophelia enough and not giving her love, time, and affection. They will not forgive themselves if Ophelia didn't come back. Their parents are exhausted and desperate to bring Ophelia back, but they failed. They died while finding Ophelia. The queen told her that after their parents died, she had to work so that she can live. She works as a saleswoman at a small store in their town. That was where she met King John. The queen kneeled down and said, I'm so sorry, Ophelia. Please go home with me and treat my son. Please, I'm begging you. Ophelia answered, I'm sorry, Elizabeth. I'm, I'm going with you. They hugged and went back to the golden city. Ophelia spoke a magic spell and the prince, su and the prince suddenly gained his strength back. The scar at the back of the Peter slowly disappeared. The family and the people of Golden City were happy that the prince was cured. The queen said to Peter, I'm sorry son for insulting Anna. I see now why you felt in love with her. She is a good person and I think that she will be a perfect fit for a queen. The kingdom of Orem needs a queen like her. Peter hugged his mother and told her mother that she wants to marry Anna. The king announced to the people of Golden City that they will have a wedding ceremony for the newly king and queen. The next morning, they got married, became the new king and queen of the Kingdom of Orem, and lived happily ever after. This story is every day, every dream. This is the point of view of the girl from the story. So one day, I was walking in the streets alone and all you can see here is trees. I like it here. Peaceful, quiet, no pollution or anything that will affect your health. As I am walking down the streets, I saw a man slipping under the tree. Out of curiosity, I approach him. He has a pointy nose, long eyelashes, and has a pinkish lips.
stop staring. She jumped out of shock. I'm not staring, she said. I'm not asleep, you know. I'm just relaxing. He stood up and looked at me once again. So I avoided his gaze. Where are you going? She asked. You shouldn't be here, you know. You should wake up now. She's confused by what he said. So she asked him, What are you talking about? He approached her and whispered, Wake up now, princess. She stood up from bed and asked herself, Was that a dream? Yes, it definitely is. What a strange dream. It feels real. She looked up to the clock and it's already 7.30 in the morning. So she started to prepare because she has school at 8.30. As the time passed by, when she was walking on her way home, she saw her friend Gianna. She told her friend about her dream where she saw a man and it feels so real to her. Her friend said, Girl, I think it's because you don't have a boyfriend since birth and now you're here dreaming about a guy. Then she left. She sighed and said to herself, Well, I guess no one would really understand me. She smiled and waved her goodbye at Gianna. When she got home, she immediately changed her clothes and lay down in her bed. Her parents are all busy, so she's living alone. He said to herself, Will I dream about him again? Well, I hope so. She closed her eyes and let herself sleep. So you're here again. She looked into his eyes. And she said, Wow, what a beautiful eyes. It's blue, like the color of the ocean. Then he said, I'm handsome, right? She asked him, Why do you keep appearing in my dream? He laughed at what she said. I'm not in your dream. You're in my dream, he said while smiling. I don't understand, she said as he looked at him. He sighed. Even I don't know why you're here. This is the first time that someone went into my dreams. I guess we're related. I don't know. Maybe past, present, or future, I guess, he said while looking up to the sky. What do you mean? That I may be related to your past? She asked him. Bingo, he said. If I'm related to your past, then how are we related? She said. That I still don't know. But you should go now. You can stay here. He smiled at her. She asked, why? Then he said, you can stay here, princess, or you'll be stuck here forever. After that, she woke up again. The day and time passes by, it's always the same. I go to school, go home, sleep, and dream about the guy again. Sometimes I just don't want to wake up anymore because I really feel safe whenever he's around. Then she dreamt about him again. What's your name? I've been here many times but I still don't know your name, she said to him. He chuckled and pinched her cheeks, which made her cheeks red, so he laughed. You're so cute, princess. My name is Axel. Axel? Why does it sound so familiar? She asked herself. My name is not Princess, by the way. My name is Patricia. She said and smiled to him. He smiled at her. You are my princess, Patricia. She looked at him with the confused eyes. What do you mean? She asked. What he answered shocked her. You are my wife for my past life. I got here because of my cruel brother who likes you too. He was so blinded by his love for you, so he killed you, and he jailed me here. I'm stuck here forever. What are you talking about? I don't understand, she said as she felt tears falling down. From the very first time that you came here, I already know that you're my wife, but I chose to hide it from you because I'm not yet sure, and I don't want to be selfish in making you stay here because I want you to enjoy your life, he said as his tears falling down. She hugged him. No, I love you, Axel. As she said, the flashbacks went into her head. Don't leave me, my princess. Please. I love you, Axel. Until the next life. Until the next life, my love. I love you so much, my princess. As the flashbacks went into her head, she hugged him, crying. I miss you so much, princess, he said and hugged her back. 
I will stay here with you, my love, she said. What? No, how about your life? He said. I'm happy here with you and I want to live with you, Axel. You don't understand. If you stay here, then you're gonna be stuck here with me forever. Let's be stuck forever. He looked at her with the wide eyes. Are you sure? Yes, my love. And she hugged him. I love you, my princess. Since then until now. I love you, Axel. Since then until now. Basically, Patricia sacrificed her life on earth because of her love for Axel and she lived with him happily ever after. That is the story of Every Day Every Dream by Norma Jean and India. Your pleasant vote buying. Once upon a time, there was a young family living in a squatter village. Benji, as the family man, was talking to Gina about the job his friend Bruno suggested. It was a construction job. Benji replying to Gina, Gina's been misled before. She was worrying about the future of their children, Brendan and Gigi. Benji replies back, saying it's alright, saying it's enough to have food each passing day. Benji was getting ready for work, while Gina woke up Brendan and Gigi to go to school. Brendan and Gigi went to their respective classrooms. Benji was on the way to inquire about the Metropolitan Building construction job he seemed interested upon. He took a quick glance at a poster campaigning down the middle for mayor. He quickly realized that the up-and-coming election was in for tomorrow. He successfully tried out for the job. Done for the day, he seemed tired. Benji was surprised his family was eating pompous food. Later in the night, Benji asked Gina where the food came from. She said it came from that Don Damilo guy. Benji woke up early in the morning, went to the voting center along with Bruno. A few hours later, they finally finished voting. Benji asked Bruno who he voted, quickly replied, saying, Don Damilo. He said, voting the same person together, what a coincidence. They went outside hearing gossip about the town demolishing the squatter village. They both talked about it, saying it's just misleading information and who would do such a thing? The following morning, while Brenda and Gigi were selling bottles, corks, and they quickly saw a riot conflict between the fathers and the residents. Brenda took a quick glance closer seeing the four residents, house being torn up down apart by the police. He heard the policeman saying that the, that the new mayor, Don DeMillo, ordering the squatter village to be torn down apart to build a new and upcoming shopping mall. They quickly ran to, the, to alert their parents. Seeing Bruno, the body of their father, along the way, he quickly helped them up running to their home. Gigi tripped along the road, woundly. Bruno carried her back up along with Brendan quickly. Quickly rushing to their home, they saw the far side of their home getting their hopes up. They saw their parents crying from far. Brendan taking a quick sight on their house saw it has been demolished. His heart beat rose and felt sadness in him. They were all fine, but sadly their beloved village has been demolished.